Hi guys, just a quick note to let you know that this video was filmed before we all went into lockdown. I know it might be obvious, but I've had quite a few concerned messages about other videos. Of course I've been indoors. I am bored, aren't we all bored? Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope wherever you are, whether you're a key worker, self-isolating, or whatever you're doing to get through this crazy time, that you're safe, you're happy, and you're being looked after and loved. Now, let's crack on with this video. Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and today I'm back and I'm in Silver Spirit. We're back in another Rolls Royce. You all said how much you enjoyed the last one so I went out and I went back to exactly the same person and found the next one. Um, it's a beautiful car, I'm really looking forward to showing you it. So as always we're going to start by looking around the outside, we'll look inside, we'll look under the bonnet, we'll walk through the dash because there's a lot to see, um, including some interesting bits like the handbrake and then we're going to take the car up for a drive because it's a really beautiful car, I hope I can do it justice and I hope you're going to enjoy it. So let's go! Today we are looking at the incredible Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit 2 and this particular model merged from the works in 1988. Sometimes you'll hear people classify different eras of Rolls-Royce and this sits in the modern generation. The Silver Spirit was produced in Crewe in England and enjoyed nearly two decades in production, being made from 1980 all the way through to 1999. Unlike other marks such as Bentley, who would make changes throughout production lifespan through things such as headlight shapes, Rolls-Royce made very few changes, so to the untrained eye, this car would be very difficult to date, especially with a personalised plate on. However, for those with an eagle eye, you'll notice a few changes. The Silver Spirit was given a few discreet updates on its predecessor, with suspension being upgraded to automatic ride control, giving buyers a fully automatic system that adjusted dampers on all four wheels at the same time. In addition to this, the car was given ABS, and although fuel economy was unlikely to be a consideration for the majority of the customers, the new fuel injection system meant that fuel consumption was noticeably improved from the previous carburetor setup. Automatic transmission was the only option, and whilst issued at launch with a three-speed automatic transmission, four-speed was an option available from late 1991. In addition to this, a noticeably small steering wheel was added and two additional vents on the fascia, which although saw a slight modernisation, was hardly the world of groundbreaking facelifts touted by other car manufacturers. Also, it's worth noting that as we discuss the car, the Silver Spirit was not only the first model in the SZ series, but was the first car to feature the retractable Spirit of Ecstasy, which I've shown you at the start of this walk around. Now, something which is interesting about Rolls-Royce that I failed to mention in my last video is that they never publicly disclosed the horsepower of their cars. However, we do know that the car was sold with a 6.75 litre, eight cylinder aluminium engine. A German car magazine called Autosport and Automotor and Sport, sorry if I've pronounced that incorrectly, my German friends, tested the engine in 1981, taking out a Silver Spirit and achieved a top speed of 115 miles per hour and 0 to 60 in just over 11 seconds. However, these cars weren't built for speeding along racetracks and are better known for their hydro pneumatic suspension and deathly quiet interior, as you'll see when we go for a drive. They are also known for their superb air conditioning, but as we're filming this in late February and it's pretty cold, I'll be leaving that off. The Silver Spirit 2 was produced from 1988 to 1993. Rolls-Royce weren't designed to be hastily put together for mass market and in fact in 1988, in the year of this car's production, Rolls-Royce only made 2,231 cars across all the models available. As for the Silver Spirit 2, there were only ever 1,152 made throughout the five year run from 88 through to 93. Also, fun fact, and slightly morbid actually, the leather within each car was of such a quality it would take between 15 and 20 cows to fully upholster each car. Although you can pick up a nice example today for under £15,000, this car wasn't always so cheap, and I've been reliably informed it retailed back in 1988 for nearly £100,000, which allowing for inflation is over a quarter of a million pounds in today's money. Please note that if you are buying these second hand, the later models are often more expensive due to representing the end of an era. The design of the Silver Spirit is reassuringly easy to recognise as Rolls Royce, which may be in part due to the fact the designer of the car, Fritz Feller, had worked on previous Rolls models and had been at the company since his apprenticeship in 1941. 
With such an esteemed career within the company and working his way up from the first rung of the ladder, there is no denying he was a true Rolls-Royce man. Now, before we take this car out, we're going to have a chat with the lovely owner, Cameron, who's now got his own YouTube channel, Not Another White Box, and who is also a good friend of mine. But you've probably spotted him before on iDriver Classic because we've previously tested his Rover and his Citroen and a couple of other bits too. So I'm really excited. Oh, and his Rolls Royce as well. So I'm really excited to show you Cameron's, uh, Cameron's latest car. And uh, I'm sure you agree with me that it's an absolutely stunning example. And... Uh, I'm going to be able to take you guys out in it today. So I hope you enjoy what we're going to do. And we're going to kick off with an interview with Cameron. And then we're going to have a take a look at the handbrake before we have a look at the inside of the car. So I thought I'd catch up with Cameron and ask him, why have you got yet another Rolls Royce? Because Cameron was the last owner of the other Rolls Royce that we took out. So Cameron, you've got one. Why have you got two? I don't actually have an answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we had this one first. Mm -hmm. I've always preferred the look of a shadow one. And because the shadow one's more expensive, we thought we'd work our way up to that. If, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There's no disrespect to this one. <laughs> but having driven them both side by side, the shadow one, it just feels so much more like a classic car. It just handles like a classic car. It's got the really thin, large steering wheel. It's mm -hmm. got, um, you know, the round headlights. And this feels so modern, even though it's it does. like 35 years old or however old it is. All right, don't wish my life away. It's 32. <laughs> it's 1988. It's 32. Well, it's ancient, isn't it? Shut up. Right, carry on. <laughs> so, having had the two side by side, we were like, oh, which one's best? Which one do we sell? And we've been at that state of mind for probably about six months <laughs> i can't decide which one to definitely get rid of so i thought why not have two rolls royce which is kind of funny because if you go along to a rolls royce meeting or, or whatever yeah everybody sort of says oh you you fancy one of these and you're like well actually i've got two <laughs> they don't know what to do with themselves it's one of those things where it's got all this snobbery associated with the badge and yeah unfortunately it's absolutely true when I take the Shadow One out, yeah. people constantly let you out, you know, wave to you, take yeah. pictures or whatever. But this one, looking a little bit newer, it's borderline hostile how people treat you. Really? Yeah, we've had uh, people in traffic on the M25 in it once, and somebody was winding down the windows to hurl abuse at the posh toffs in the Rolls Royce, and you have people cut you up and make hand gestures and. We, um, we just popped out for lunch That's in this horrible. and there were people giving us death stares for yeah. holding them up while you've got a parking space. It's really strange. It takes the edge off owning the car. Oh, that's honest. really sad. But it's it's one of those things, it, whenever I take it out, yeah. If, if anybody stops and asks about it, it's always, what's it worth? So my What is it worth? That's my favourite game to play. <laughs> first number that comes into my head <laughs> so yeah it's been worth 50 grand it's been worth a million it's been worth eight hundred thousand, and they always believe it so the irony is it's worth less than my rover p6 which is absolutely has the red carpet rolled out for it yeah. everywhere you take it but not the rolls royce it's not the opposite effect it's really strange how weird i'm sure there's some psychology behind it but we don't get that as much with the shadow one how strange. I think it's because this looks newer. People assume it's... It's a shame. More, right, yeah. are we going to swap seats and I'll have a go at driving? Yeah, I think we will. Sorry not to tell you much about the car. <laughs> Just <laughs> ranted about it. No, 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 no. First because, world problems. <laughs> no, because that's the point of asking the owner questions. It's to yeah. find out what you think is unique about owning this car or what's, yeah. you know, what's interesting. If I want to know about the car, I'll read the logbook. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The bottom line is... They're not as expensive to run as you think. It mm. does about 23, 24 miles to the gallon. It's not bad. Which is really not bad for the size of the engine. And the parts you can get hold of. Some of the parts cross over with other cars and you mm. get them cheaper. And there's, there's a lot of Rolls Royce spares places out there. And we've not actually had any trouble from it. We've had this about three years now. Mm. And there's been nothing other than servicing. And We can't complain, can you? No. 
So I guess for people that are thinking about something like this, I guess that you would say this is probably top end of affordable? Yeah, I, I get one that's been looked after. This one had a full Rolls Royce service history. Lovely. Up until we ruined it. By <laughs> <laughs> and the, some of the bills over the years are absolutely terrifying. When it was about right. four years old, it had £17,000 worth of <gasps> welding to the back end of it. Four years old? Four years old. Because it had rotted already. So, Ooh. yeah, be good with a welder if you've got a Rolls Royce. <laughs> right, come on, let's talk teeth. Yep. So this is a bit of a weird one because you'll probably see my foot. Hiya. Now, this is a little button on the floor, if you can see. It almost looks like a pedal. I'm going to zoom in there. So this is actually your handbrake. So you push that down to put the handbrake on. I'm going to take my foot off. The handbrake is on. I'm going to pull this so you'll be able to see. And then that pops back up just like that it's a little bit sticky today because uh, the car's been in storage but i just wanted to show you that because it's a little bit zany so we've had a look around the outside of the rolls and it's time to jump in and as you may know rolls royce is synonymous with luxury quality elegance and as you get in this car i think that it really delivers everything that the brand says it does without having to shout about anything it's classy without being trashy it screams I've cost a lot of money without looking tacky and I'm really I really love a good Rolls Royce I've been in a few now um, and every single time that I get in one I'm really overwhelmed with how nice they are they're all really good they're all really good quality I mean as we get in this car excusing a few wrinkles on the leather seats because that's fair wear and tear you think that this car was made in 1988, as was I. I. That's when I was born. And I look haggard compared to this car. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, you look at all this and you just think there's not a single blemish on it. It's beautiful. The steering wheel is beautiful. And all of this dash is just... To say that especially you've got this beautiful... I don't know, I want to use the word beige, but I'm sure some people would be upset by that. This almost light sand-coloured finish is just beautiful i mean we'll start over by the glove box where i can kind of talk to you about some of the stuff now as we open that up so it's a little bit like when you break a good bar of chocolate you've got a dense noise you have with this glove box as well so it comes down and you've got that solid wood there it's beautiful you can really see that they've you know this, this isn't a car that's just made and put together this is crafted now over here you've got your air vents now i'm going to be quite careful with these because i like to be careful with the cars i borrow but as you can see you've got infinite movement on that so you can really direct the air not just up and down like you would on other cars but you can really get it exactly where you want and then you've got your little chrome push to turn that on and that's replicated over on the driver's side as well not sure how I feel about these digital clocks. This is the, probably one of the only things that I would change about this is that these, for me, when you've got the analog dials in front of you, it almost feels a little bit unnatural that you've got your, you've got your temperature and you've got your clock in digital. But it's that weird crossover period where they did a bit of analog and a bit of digital. And this is me being an absolute nitpicker because everything else I'm totally enamoured with. Now as we look at the dials, it's all very... What I like about this is all very well laid out. You've got everything that you need over here that I guess they thought, well, you're going to need, but it's not going to be hugely... You know, it's not going to be something you're staring at all the time. So you've got your temperature gauge, you've got your fuel, you've got your oil and you've got your battery as well and they're all really nicely laid out actually and then over here you've got your speedo you've got a trip clock you've got your mileometer exactly what you'd expect and then a section of warning lights over here so if something's wrong they'll light up um i know when we did a bit of a test drive earlier there's a fuse that's gone um or there's like a little bit of wiring that he's sorting so one of the lights came on um but well that's the magical classic cars for you now for me one of the other things that i really liked about this was uh and loads of people are gonna think this is really sad but i really like the seats because look at this let me show you so I put the ignition on so these buttons down here move your seat and bear in mind in 1988 this would have been some really cool technology watch this I can literally move my seat anywhere I want. I absolutely love it. I think it's real. I'm trying not to move the seat because I've got to give it back to camera later and I don't want to move his seat too much. But 
it's just it's just beautiful it's really well put together it's just going to flip that off there it's well put together it's well <laughs> it's well put together it's thoughtfully crafted and just like the last rolls that we took out you can feel that luxury in every single detail of the car and as someone who gets to go out in lots of different cars and very lucky like that you can really really see the detail and i'm thoroughly impressed so let's get the car started up so you can hear what she sounds like now just wanted to show you the uh well the gear stick so to speak the gears um it's automatic just like the last one we took out and uh, everything is on column change but this is the easiest column change i've ever used so you've got park because we've obviously stopped reverse neutral drive and then obviously you've got your other gears as well so i'm just going to pop that back there you go. Now, I'm just going to have to be very careful when I take this out because, God forbid, I hit this instead of the indicators. I'm so excited to start this car up. It's We've been out in it already today. We went and did some shopping at Costco, aka panic buying. And um, now we're going to go, go take this out for a test drive. So it's a bit exciting. First of all, it's time to start the car up. So that sounds absolutely incredible. Now, I just need to put the window down so that you can hear. Might help if I've got the right window. Yeah, I'm gonna open one of the back ones, have a listen. Ready? That sounds absolutely amazing. And I'm really not surprised, because look what we're in, we're in a Rolls Royce. This is so exciting. Right, I'm gonna do the window up and uh, we're gonna go out for a test drive. So we're out in another Rolls Royce and again just like the last one it doesn't disappoint and you can probably hear or in the case of this car absolutely not hear anything because it's so quiet and to say that this car and I know I keep drilling it back but to say it was made in 1988 is amazing because it's so quiet it's so smooth and it is so beautiful to drive I do love I do love a luxury car I mean look I love my you know my you know my everyday tat and the everyday funny cars like you know i really enjoyed the citroen that we did this morning that was funny but you know what this rolls royce is something else and it's really nice to drive something like this because it's just it's just incredible so as i drive um we've got the v8 under the bonnet so it's not only the luxury within the car it's the luxuriousness under the bonnet of having that v8 so as we come around the corner so again what i really like about this car is the brakes aren't too sharp because you know i've taken cars out recently and the brakes are very on off whereas this the brakes feel quite smooth but they don't feel too much so as we put our foot down you can really feel it start flying down the road but just by picking up the speed you don't actually lose anything from the driving experience so the handling isn't feeling shaky it doesn't feel like it's all over the road and it doesn't feel sluggish in any way whatsoever now one of the things i complained about when i took the last rolls royce out was the steering felt very light um and it almost made me feel like i was you know i, I didn't feel not that i didn't feel in control of the car but i didn't feel like it just felt so light i just felt a wee bit uncomfortable but with this i feel like i've got more connection between the car and the road it's incredibly responsive though i mean even the smallest turn of the steering wheel look we're kind of coming around that corner but it's probably not quite as responsive as a modern car which i find too much i find it just really intense so this is like a nice mix of being very you know it's very easy for whoever's driving it it's very nice to navigate around especially for such an enormous car but you're not you know you're not either stuck with this super light you know power assist steering or trying to drag it around like you're trying to drag a boat around with rope it's really really nice and it's kind of it's hard to explain really because i guess in terms of well you know what can i tell you or what's exceptional about the car or unexceptional i guess it's the whole driving experience really and that's the hard thing when you test a rock when you test a rolls and put it on the channel is that when you're trying to show people what the car is like it's so hard to convey what a luxurious special car it is without having you next to me because it's so quiet i mean if you think we're doing what we're doing 
25 miles an hour and it honestly feels like we're not you know we're not moving at all and we've been going along these massive potholed roads and all the rest of it and um it's just it's been great it's been absolutely beautiful and to be quite honest it's just quite a nice relaxing luxury drive and i'm really enjoying it and i think yeah the mpg you know it's not comparable to one of these boring modern suvs that do god knows how many to the to the gallon and all the rest of it but sometimes and it's something that we discussed when we took the jaguar out actually and if you haven't watched the jag videos you probably will enjoy those if you've enjoyed this is that sometimes it's worth sacrificing a little bit of mpg for some unadulterated luxury and i would say it's definitely the case in this car it's it's just been great i've just had a really amazing afternoon so we've had a little bit of uh <laughs> the drive started off so well um we've just had a little bit of an experience similar to cameron um so i thought surely people can't be that hostile and uh, we headed down into the village which was quite built up and uh, we just got carved up by somebody who uh was really really hostile and really kind of almost actually had a chip on her shoulder about the car i mean ironically her modern suv was probably worth more than this rolls royce and yet she came at it hammer and tong cut us up got in front of us and almost had some strange triumph over being in front of us but thankfully the brakes on this car are great we were able to kind of finish off and um by the way i'm going very slowly because we're passing a um horse rider and um I'm probably a bit, um, in fact, this is a small fact about me, I'm probably a bit OTT about overtaking horses because um, I feel very strongly that we all exist, we should all be on the road and um, I absolutely despise people who speed past horses because I think whether you agree with horse riding or not, whether you think horses should be on the road or not, it's not that animal's fault, give it a break, just be nice, it's two seconds out of your day. Sorry, I've gone off on a rant there, but she thought, God, that was a really nice Rolls Royce driver. Anyway, today's be today's drive has been really, really nice, we've had a really good time, um, it's been a beautiful car to drive, and something that I've not mentioned as well is the seating position in this car is brilliant, so I'm sat quite high up. It's been lovely, absolutely lovely. I've got full visibility over the end of the bonnet. The back pillars are a bit wide and it's got headrests on the back seat, which makes it slightly hairy. But apart from that, it's been just absolutely incredible. Now, before I go, um, I know that some of you will, um, well, not some of you, I think everybody is experiencing uh, difficulties with coronavirus. Um, I know that some countries have gone into lockdown and all the rest of it. So wherever you are in the world, I hope that you're okay. I hope that you're staying safe and um, I hope that you're as well as you can be because I know that it's a really frightening time. Um, so I wish you all the best and um, until next time, take care and drive safely.